As I journey here mid the toes and tears, there's a rainbow in the cloud. He will safely lead, I must have no fear. There's a rainbow in the cloud. There's a rainbow that is shining. There's a rainbow in the cloud. Ah, good evening. There I go. It's good to see y'all enjoying this beautiful blessing from God that he promised from the beginning of time. Where's the rainbow, Theo? Say, well, it's, it's good to see everyone, and uh, it's a pleasure always to be in a place that has been set aside for us to worship God in, in spirit and in truth. And uh, so we're, we're happy to, to have you. So if we have anyone that's visiting, I don't see any, but we want you to know that the doors of this building roll back on welcome hinges, and you are our honored guest. We uh, invite you to return again or view again, whichever uh, method that you are using. Uh, we try to provide uh, good, healthy Bible information, whether uh, wherever you meet us at and, and try to answer your questions. So we always encourage you, if we say something that you're curious about, uh, we, you can always call us or write us or email us, and you can visit our website uh, at crcoc.net. Uh, follow us on, on YouTube, and you can view us on Facebook. We're in all those places, and uh, we encourage you to, to become a part of us and to obey the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. So, so this evening, uh, we're going to look at this subject. Got a question. Have you uh, ever been uh, alone and by yourself, or when you're alone, you wanted someone else that could be with you? And, and you know, I remember being in the military and being deployed often that, that sometimes, even when you're around other people, you feel like you're alone. And, and, and that's because, uh, you know, you're not identified with, with uh, certain people. Uh, We've often, we've done funerals here, and, and some uh, for the elderly people, and they had no family. And sometimes, you know, we have a, a few brothers there and, and to, to carry the casket to the, to the grave, to the grave site and or to the burial, uh, to the grave, and, and a few people to sing some hymns, and, and, and uh, you know, that person is dying alone. They, they had no family members and no relatives, and some, and some of them probably were not aware that they had passed. Loneliness is a growing problem in our society. More than 53% of all adults in the United States are unmarried. That's over 110 million people. A study by the American Council of Life Insurance reported that the loneliest group in, in the United States of America are college students that they are, are, are alone. The survey also says that the divorced people, welfare recipients, single mothers, rural students, housewives, and the elderly are among some of the other loneliest people around. Loneliness is a widespread problem. In fact, one, one in every four pe person have complained about feeling alone. Persistent loneliness can be harmful uh, to your health. So this evening, we're going to look at the subject as we, before we do that, if you would, turn to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. And we're going to read down through to verse 23. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, 
Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a child, a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is, means God with us. So we are chosen for a topic this evening, God with us. God with us. Does it matter whether God is with us or, or not? We're looking at this topic because when we are lonely, especially as Christians, there should be never a time where we feel that there is no one around because God should always be, be with us. The Bible is like a mirror that allows a person to look at himself and, and, and God, what God sees when, when we're looking into the Bible. It tells us about ourselves. If you wish to look into your soul, we read the Bible and meditate on the scriptures and God will be tell you the truth. They will sometimes assure you and they will sometimes show fault and weaknesses when we read the scriptures. They will surely tell you what God sees, think, feel, and says about us. We can certainly see God with us in the life of Jesus who reveals what God is like uh, in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. And sometimes even, you know, you look into the mirror of the Bible, it tells us what's in our soul, uh, what, we, what we think and, and how we should act. And when we look in the mirror in our bathrooms, we see the same thing. Don't, some, don't when we look, go to the bathroom and we're getting dressed and we look into, in the mirror, sometimes we see things that we like and sometimes we see things that we don't like. We see something that's missing here and a wrinkle has formed there. And then we got, so, so we, we, the, 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 we, we should look at the Bible as a mirror for us. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 says, God says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. So God has promised us as Christians, when we have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, he said he would never leave us, he would never forsake us, he is always with us. So there should never be a time that we feel alone. If we're feeling alone as Christians, we should open up our Bibles and God will comfort us. Paul often closed the epistles with a phrase similar to that. He said, the Lord be with you. And sometimes when we're departing and leaving one another, that is an excellent greeting where we can say, as Paul said in Romans chapter 15 and verse 33, he says, now the God of peace be with you. Isn't that a blessing for a Christian? Or as he said in Romans 16 and 20, he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Who is that? Fellow Christians, people that have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can extend this greeting to them of God being with us. The God of love and peace be with you. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 11. Such greetings speak of God's favor and blessing for those who love and obey him. Do you love and obey him? Is God's favor with you? Psalms chapter 23, a psalm that we've been reading, if you would turn there, that we were reading it before we was Christians. Our parents would read it. They would make us remember it for Sunday school. Whether we was in the church or not, I think that probably the majority of the world knows what Psalm chapter 23 says without even looking at it. We, we know, but look, take a look at what Psalm to our, our chapter 23 said. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Last week we talked about the, the, what a shepherd does because of how sheep are. That sheep have a tendency to wonder and sheep has a, a tendency to become afraid and, and sheep need to be protected. And, and why? That's why God has shepherds. But the Bible tells us when we read this, if we are feeling lonely and we are feeling anxiety. Maybe we should sit down and read this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green paths. He finds a place that's comfortable and suitable for us. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Where, where, why? Because we have to lead sheep to the place of comfort, and sheep cannot stand running water. It, it, it what? It causes, uh, it causes them to, to, to flee and straight. 
He restores my soul. Do you believe that? He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for what? For his name's sake. When we if we'll feel like we're drifting and feel like that, that we're lonely and, and God is not with us, we should read things like this because what? It, it will set us on the right path. And sometimes uh, I've heard people, this is their favorite scripture, and they will read it once a day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comforted me. We can be assured of that in this crazy world, when we have all kind of tragedies happen on a regular basis, and where COVID is, is, is consuming families and, and, and loved ones and aunts and uncles, we can be a comforted, feel comfort that what? That God is with us and he will protect us from this evil. It says, thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So it's a wonderful psalm that where if we feel alone and that there's nobody with us, then we can be assured that God is with us. And what did, Saul, what did God determine in Genesis chapter 2? He said, it is not good for man to be alone. And sometimes we have people say, well, I don't want to be around anyone. I don't like to be around people. That might be true, but when you believe the word of God, it should uh, I'll let you know that you, might, you have issues with God because God has already decided it is not good. And Solomon I says, what, two are better than one. Why? Well, you can, when you fall, the other one can lift you up. So, so Psalm 23 is a beautiful, comforting passage that God gives us. Jesus came into the world as Emmanuel, God with us. It matters whether God is with us. Having a relationship with God is the most important relationship we can have. We can say, oh, no, some people say, well, I love my children to death, and they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the, the jewel of my, they are the crown of my life, and, the, 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 and, and all these beautiful things we can say about our children, but they should not. That should be God, the apple of my eye. No, God should be the apple of your eye. So my, my, I love my wife. Yeah, but what? Like Brother Ote said this, if whatever the stewardship and you're watching over on this earth, you're going to leave here. You cannot keep it. So Jesus said, well, he should be with us. When God is with us, we have his favor and his blessings. If God is absent from our lives, we are spiritually alone and without hope. That what? We can be around people. Or we cannot be around people, but when God is absent, we are truly alone. So we should try to keep God close to us. And for this reason, we should want God in our hearts and we should want God in our lives so that well, he can keep us. Like Jesus, we want, all, we want always to do those things that please God. We should live our lives in a pattern of God, how God wants us to do, how God wants us to live. And, and we should often think about that. Am I doing what Jesus Christ wanted me, wants me to do? John 8 and 29 says, and he who sent me is with me, Jesus said. The Father has not left me alone. He will not leave you alone. For I always do those things that please him. We can be assured that when we are doing what God wants us to do, then God is with us and he is pleased with us. But what happens when God is with us? What, we might ask ourselves, what's the, what difference does it make? Remember Noah? Look at the case. In the days of Noah, the Lord saw that wickedness had filled the whole face of the earth. But when he looked at Noah, he said, Noah found favor in his sight. Because the whole world is going astray, doesn't mean that we have to do what the world is doing. We don't, and so God said, what? He will be with us. He kept Noah and what? Eight people were saved because God found favor with Noah. The question is, who is God? Think about this. God can, is keeping your loved ones, the one that you pray because he finds favor with you. You love your kids. You love your parents. You love your relatives. You love your wives. You love your spouses. Then you should, what? You should want to have favor with God and you should always want to do those things that please him. We should want God to be with us. We're raising young kids, and we want, we're concerned about their safety, their well-being, what would the world be like in 20 years. We don't have to worry about those things if we keep God with us. Even though Joseph's older brother hated him and sold him into slavery at 17 years old, God took care of him. Didn't matter where he went. Pontifus, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the, the guard of the Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites, and they took him and 
placed him in, in, in prison, but what? When he was down there, it says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You having a problem with a uh, person? Do what God wants you to do. God said, well, he can make your enemies become your what? Your friends. If you want God's favor. God wants you, God, and, and the thing about it is God has, this is the, this, what God has provided for us as his children, as Christians. Stephen said about Joseph in Acts chapter 7 and verse 9 and 10, uh, uh, or in the later years, God was with, uh, going, moving on, in later years, God was with the judges. After Israel had taken the land of Canaan, the uh, judges chapter 2 and verse 18, every time Israel sinned, God will send them into captivity or, or, or what? Allow them to be conquered. When they cried out to God, God would take them out and they were going up, back and forth, back and forth. But God listens and hears his children. Even when we have sinned, when we have transgressed the word of God, when we turn to God, God will turn to us. Remember he told Solomon that when Solomon was praying for the temple and Solomon would, would pray, said what? When they turned towards this place, Jerusalem, when they prayed, God said, what? Will you hear in heaven and answer us on earth. So God, what God, anytime we sin, we can win God's favor back by doing what God wants us to do. David was a man after God's own heart. Though he suffered through many trials, in 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 14, and David behaved himself wiser in all his ways, and the Lord was what? The Lord was with him. When he behaved himself, said, how are you behaving today? How have you been behaving this weekend? Have we been conducting ourselves like God wants us to do? Or have we been doing those things that are unholy and unscriptural and, and, and not right? And sometimes our parents used to tell, to tell us that you need to behave. Well, you're going somewhere, but you, you remember to behave what? They want you to act right. And sometimes I guess we should tell ourselves that but when we're looking in that mirror in the morning, before we go out into our community, into school, into work, we should look at us. We need to say what? You need to behave today and act right and act like God wants us to have. And 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 10 says that David became greater and greater for the Lord God of hosts. He was with him. And one thing that David never did and says that Solomon had a problem was David never fell into idolatry. He never fell in the dark. So he said God, David was a man after God's own heart. When God is with us, he blesses us and helps us through our struggles and our challenges. You can, you're worried about something. You're having anxieties about things and stuff. Take it to God. Pray to God about it. He's given us that avenue by which we can access him, access him 24 hours a day. All we have to do is say, Our Father which is in heaven, and God will hear you. And he listens to you. And even though things might seem dire, God still has your future in his hand. King Hezekiah did right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father David had done, Hezekiah clung to the Lord. He held on to him, just like some, some, some lint or, or something on your clothes. You just can't get it off. He said he clung to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments. As a result... The Lord was with him. He prospered him whether, wherever he went. You want to do well in life? Keep God with you. Obey the gospel. Do that which is good. Do that which is right. Behave yourself spiritually as Christians and what God will, God will make your path straight. The Lord God said to Israel in Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. He's talking to us. When we are people of God, everything that God says to his people, whether it's Israel or whether it's apostles or whether it's disciples, whatever God says, those promises, amen, those promises are to us. And so it says, but don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That is a promise to us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be afraid as long as we keep God with us, as long as we cleave to God. When we cling to God, God will cling to us when we keep him close. James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, therefore submit. He gives us the key elements for here keeping God with us. Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, or behave, or repent. 
you, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Isn't that, look at all those words. Submit, resist, flee, draw near, cleanse, purify. God gives us a, the, 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 element, the combination of the key to keeping him close to him. When God is with us, that doesn't mean we'll never be suffered with temptation. The devil going, if God, matter of fact, the closer you are with God, the more you'll probably be tempered. If we take an example of Paul's life, look at how many things God said, I'm going to show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Why? Paul, Paul stood there and he watched these people stone Stephen to death. And I'm sure that was in the back of his mind when he was on the road to Damascus that, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be the greatest in, in this thing of God, this fight for God. But this man just gave his life for the very thing that I say that I believe in. Can you imagine that? So when God, that, that light shone when he was on the road to Damascus, I think Paul just said, what, what, what you want me to do, Lord? I, I thought I was doing what you wanted me to do. I thought I was being your, your servant. What is it that you want me to do? And God told me, go to Damascus and it will be told him. So we need to keep God with us. But we have those temptations. We look at the life of Paul. Paul was often in different trials. We all face trials, headaches, difficulties. And anyone who has read the story of Joseph, Davis, David, Hezekiah knows that their lives were not always easy. Every man of God in the Old Testament, from Adam all the way up to Malachi, and the New, all men of God, we're going to have issues. You will sin. Solomon makes it clear, there is no one that lives that sin is not. That is not in man nature, but God gives us a what? He gives us a remedy. He gives us this thing that's called repentance. When God is with us, we are never alone in our temptations, our struggles, or our suffering. God is never, we are never alone. We look to God for our strength, our comfort, and our hope. So we look to God for everything. We should depend on God for everything. If we want, and when we were with God, it's a comforting thought to go home at night and close your doors and know that, that you know, that, that, that you don't have to worry about the things that typical people worry about. We just said, you know, it's interesting how God said, my wife screamed yesterday in the, from the bathroom. It's like, why is she screaming? My heart rate went up and stuff. It's like something happened to the kid. You know, everything goes through your mind. And for some reason, the receptacle on the wall just caught on fire. Just poof. You know, and I'm thinking, well, first thing, said, what if we wouldn't have been home? I was like, well, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you think sometimes things, you see things in your life, and you say, if I would have been a few minutes early or a few minutes later, and we, we thank God for those things. So God, we can see God working in our lives. Continue. In Judges chapter 16 and verse 18, when Delilah saw that he had told her, speaking of, uh, of Samson, told her all that was in his heart. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistine. Come up and once more, for he has told me all that is in his heart. And moving on, going a little further. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him, and she said, the Philistines are up on you, Samson. So he woke up from his sleep and said, I will go out before them at other times and shake, uh, shake, uh, shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord has departed from him. Where do you, do you, do, you know, I don't know if this story is saying that, you know, you shouldn't tell all your centuries, but what? That the, the sinner does not have to know where all your great strength lies. They, she constantly tormented uh, Samson and asking him, and that should have been a cue to him, a red flag. Why is it that this woman wants to know, the only thing she wants to know is why are you so strong? Why are you so strong? And so, but, so what, what, but when he did those things that did not please God, when his hair was gone, God was gone. And so what, 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 when we lose our faith, when we stop reading and studying and looking at ourselves in the word of God, when we start obeying God and not behaving ourselves and walking according to the word of God, then that should be a cue to what? God has departed from us. But later on, when his hair grew back, God came back. He could no longer defeat the Philistine when Samson's hair grew back. When Samson prayed, God restored his strength. Look how simple it is. He prayed to God this one time, and God answered him and gave him his strength. And sometimes we say, well, what, what, was it, uh, what happened uh, to him? Well, we know in Hebrews chapter 11, 
that the writer of the book of Hebrews mentions Samson in the great hall, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the hall of fame of faith. Now, scriptures give us more than one picture of God with view of Solomon. When Solomon first became king, as we talked about it also, it says, Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. So what? Solomon was the greatest man on the face of the earth, the wisest man on the face of the earth, the richest man on the face of the earth, and he, he what? But when he was old, it said his wives turned his heart away from God. But Solomon married many wives, it says, in 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 69. Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as his father David did. David had many wives, not as many as Solomon, but David didn't build idols and high places for his wives. And Solomon what? Did just the opposite. And Solomon built a high place for all his foreign wives. That's a thousand places. That's a lot of landscape who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Now the Lord was angry with Solomon and his heart was turned away from the Lord. We should be careful. When God tells us to do something, we should do what God wants us to do. Look at Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, be, be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very de desolate says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. What happened? When we, if, if we're not following the word of God, what God wants us to do, we are creating cisterns, things that will not hold. It's not going to last. It's not, not forever. The only thing that is forever is the word of God. Whatever we are building on the face of the earth, if we are holding on those things and trying to make them as though they are eternal, everything that you have confidence in is going to what? It's going to leak out. The Jews left a God who loved them for their worthless gods and who were only man-made pieces of stone and wood, and, and they turned from God. In Jeremiah 5 and, and, and verse 29 uh, through 31, we, must too, we too must ask the question, if we have forsaken the Lord, what will we do at the end of it? When God holds us responsible, they choose sin over righteousness, and then they harden their hearts against God. We must be careful to keep our hearts close to God. And sometimes we see when, when, when brothers and sisters drift away and leave the church, and, 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 and then they look at it when you're trying to encourage them to come back, they make it seem as though it's the church's fault, it's God's fault, it's Jesus Christ's fault. It's a no, it's a what? No, no one wants to take responsibility for their own action. We, we have to be careful to keep, uh, keep ourselves close to God. Jeremiah 6.15 says of Jerusalem, were they, were they not ashamed because of their abominations they have done? They were not even ashamed. They did not even know how to blush. That what? That, that, that profanity and nudity and, and, and vulgar stuff did not bother them anymore. And so we have to be careful of the things that we look at, the things that we hear, the things that we see, that what? Those things should bother us. And one of the things should bother us is what person has given us the indicator that what? I am either a Christian and not living right, or I never became a Christian in the first place. But we should have what? Like we said, we should love the person and hate the sin, and we should always encourage a person to obey the gospel. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time that I punish them, they shall be cast out, says the Lord. I see even in our own culture, in our culture, some who are never ashamed of immorality, as we said. And with what? We should be embarrassed. We should not, we try to remove ourselves as far as we can uh, from that. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. What caused us to leave? What caused us to drift away? What caused us not to be faithful? What? It's what? It, it, it's an evil heart of unbelief. And that's the very thing Satan wants us, us to have. Well, we decide, we start not believing God anymore. We don't believe in the truth. We don't believe in worship. We don't believe in reading our Bible. We no longer pray anymore. anymore. What? We are departing from the living God. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 if you would, turn to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Hebrews 10 
and verse 25. It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of psalm is. What's the manner of psalm? It is to come together on the first day of the week, on the Lord's day in the place that has been designated. That is the manner of psalm, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. So what, don't forsake the assembly as some people are, are choose to do. For if we sin willfully, God calls it a willful sin. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remained no more sacrifice for us. When we, when we, we start forsaking the assembly, then what? There's nothing else left. God has not created some other manner of eternal life or salvation, but that which he's, uh, he's shown us. But a certain fear for looking for the judgment and a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. We should stick close to God. We should be the people with, that God wants to be. We should what? We should be that God with us people, and we should keep God close to us. And when we see, look at the, on the day of Pentecost, that what? 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls wanted, to be, wanted God to be with them. And when Peter preached, when he said, ye men of Israel, hear these words, and, and, and when he finished that sermon, he said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. And 3,000 souls were, were added to the, the church. And from the sermon he preached also on Solomon Porch, it says that what, 2,000 men, uh, 2,000 people had obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we want God to be with us in our lives. If we are Christians, then we should repent so that God will come back to us and pray. If we have not obeyed the gospel, then we should obey the gospel so that God can be with us. So if we have any here that wishes to obey the gospel, if we have any here that uh, desires to make a confession, we'll give you the opportunity to do so as we stand and sing the selected hymn. For the cleansing are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 